Welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss intellectual property rights. Intellectual property, IP, pertains to any original creation of the human intellect such as artistic, literary, technical or scientific creation. Intellectual property rights, IPR, refers to the legal rights given to the inventor or creator to protect his invention or creation for a certain period of time. These legal rights confer an exclusive right to the inventor or creator or his assignee to fully utilize his invention, creation for a given period of time. In the ever-evolving landscape of commerce, creativity and technological advancement, the concept of intellectual property rights stands as a pillar safeguarding the fruits of human ingenuity. The intricate web of protections woven by trademarks, patents and copyrights serves as a shield, nurturing innovation, fostering creativity and stimulating economic growth on a global scale. Now we will discuss the brief history of IPR. The laws and administrative procedures relating to IPR have their roots in Europe. The trend of granting patents started in the 14th century. In comparison to other European countries in some matters, England was technologically advanced and used to attract artisans from elsewhere on special terms. The first known copyrights appeared in Italy. Venus can be considered the cradle of IP system as most legal thinking in this area was done here. Laws and systems were made here for the first time in the world and other countries followed in due course. Patent Act in India is more than 150 years old. The inaugural one is 1856 Act, which is based on the British patent system and it has provided the patent term of 14 years followed by numerous acts and amendments. Intellectual property rights mainly include trademark, patent, copyright, industrial design rights, geographical indications. Let's take a closer look at each one of them individually. Number one, trademarks. A trademark is a distinctive sign or indicator used by an individual, business or organization to identify and distinguish its products or services from those of others. It can take various forms including words, logos, symbols, names and even colors. The primary purpose of a trademark is to prevent confusion among consumers regarding the origin or source of goods or services. Trademarks are the superheroes of the business world. Those unique symbols, names or logos that make your favorite brands instantly recognizable. They are like the signature of a brand, creating trust and helping you navigate through a sea of choices. Imagine Nike without its swoosh or McDonald's without those golden arches. These symbols are not just cool designs. They are the face of the brand, telling a story of quality and reliability. Now we will discuss the history and evolution of trademark system in India. Colonial roots. Trademark protection in India traces back to colonial times with early emphasis on preventing unfair competition. Trademarks Act 1940. The first statutory framework for trademarks providing formal legal structure for registration and protection. Trade and Merchandise Marks Act 1958. It replaced the 1940 Act aligning India's trademark laws with international standards for a structured approach. Trademarks Act 1999, a significant overhaul aligning India's trademark laws with the global practices emphasizing registration, protection and enforcement. Amendments and strengthening. Ongoing amendments, including those in 2002 and 2010, addressing emerging challenges, streamlining processes and enhancing enforcement. Digital age and globalization. Adaptation to e-commerce challenges and global business dynamics, ensuring trademarks are safeguarded in digital landscape. Now let's discuss international engagement. India's participation in international treaties like the Madrid Protocol and the NICE Agreement aligns its trademark practices with the global standards. Today, India's trademark framework reflects modernization, prioritizing brand protection, fostering innovation and staying relevant in the ever-evolving global market. Now, we will discuss the key aspects of trademarks. Distinctiveness. Trademarks must possess distinctiveness to be registered. The more unique and distinctive a mark, the stronger protection it receives. Next, 
is visual elements. Trademarks encompass visual elements such as logos, symbols, names, or even distinctive colors. These visual cues create a memorable brand identity. Now we will be discussing registration and legal protection. While registration is not mandatory, it provides enhanced legal protection. Registration provides exclusive rights to the owner, allowing them to take legal action against any unauthorized use or infringement. Next is duration. Trademarks can be renewed indefinitely, provided they continue to be used and renewed according to the regulations. The next is memorability. A successful trademark is memorable. It leaves a lasting impression on consumers' minds, making it easier for them to recall and choose the brand over its competitors. Now let's discuss Indian Trademarks Act. The Indian Trademarks Act specifies that any mark which is distinctive, that is, capable of distinguishing goods and services of one undertaking from another and capable of being represented graphically can be a trademark. Since trademarks do not grant exclusive right that could be exploited, there is no need to limit their validity. But without time limit, trademark validity would lead to unnecessary number of registered trademarks without any applicability. In India, the initial term of trademark registration is for 10 years and thereafter, it has to be renewed from time to time. The applicant can apply for trademark registration at Trademark Registry Office, Mumbai, which is the head office, Delhi, Kolkata, Ahmedabad and Chennai. Now students, let's discuss infringement of trademark. Infringement occurs when someone else uses a trademark that is same or similar to a registered trademark for the same or similar goods or services. In case of infringement, false product is passed off to customers in impression of genuine product. Thus term passing off is used for such type of practices. The passing off product is very detrimental for trade as it takes away market share of genuine producers. Besides, the consumers are also deceived and suffer from subpar product quality. Now students, we will discuss patents. The word patent originates from Latin word patere, which means to lay open, that is, to make available for public inspection. A patent is an exclusive right granted for an invention, which may be a product or a process that provides in general a new way of doing something or offers a technical solution to a problem. The purpose of a patent is to encourage innovation by granting inventors a limited period of exclusivity over their creations. Some of the noteworthy patents include Tesla Autopilot, Amazon's drone delivery system, IBM's quantum computing system, Bionic Eye, CRISPR-Cas12 and Cas13 systems, etc. The patentability of any invention needs to fulfill certain criteria. Number one, usefulness. An invention must have industrial applicability or be applied for practical purpose. Number two, novelty. An invention must represent a novel technological advancement that has not been disclosed or made accessible to the public through prior art in the relevant country or anywhere else in the world before the date of patent filing. Number three, non-obviousness. An invention that can be easily replicated by an ordinary person with average skills is considered obvious and is not eligible for patent protection. Therefore, for an invention to be patentable, it must not be obvious. As per Section 3 of Patent Act 1970, these are not patentable. 1. Frivolous invention. Number 2. Invention against natural laws. Number 3. Inventions which are not fair to health of human, animal, plant life, environment as well as contrary to the public order of morality. Number four, discovery of any living thing, discovery of any non-living substances occurring in nature, formulation of any abstract theory, discovery of any scientific principle. Number five, substance or chemical obtained by mere admixture resulting in the aggregation of the properties, mere arrangement or rearrangement of known devices. Number six, the invention relating to atomic energy and related to the security of India. Students, we will now discuss history and evolution of patents in India. The evolution of patent legislation in India traces back to Act 6th of 1856, aimed at encouraging inventions and unveiling the secrets behind them. Act 9th of 1857 repealed Act 6th due to the lack of British Crown approval. In 1859, Act 15 brought forth 
exclusive privileges for useful inventions, refining the scope and extending the priority period. In 1872, Act 13 consolidated protection for designs further amended in 1883, Act 16th of 1883, to safeguard the novelty of inventions disclosed in India's exhibition. The Indian Patents and Designs Act of 1911 replaced prior laws marking the first instance of patent administration under the controller of patents. Subsequent amendments in 1920 introduced reciprocal arrangements with the UK, while 1930 amendments covered secret patents, patent of addition and increased patent terms. In 1950, Act 32nd, amendments addressed working of inventions and compulsory licenses. The Patents Act of 1970 replaced the 1911 Act, aligning with the changes recommended by Justice N. Rajgopala Ayangar Committee in 1959. Amendments in 1999 and 2002 facilitated product patent applications and introduced new patent rules in 2003. The 2005 Patents Amendment Act marked the latest significant amendment emphasizing India's commitment to international patent standards. Now, students, we will discuss some key aspects of patents. First is novelty and inventiveness. To be eligible for a patent, an invention must be new, involve an inventive step, and be capable of industrial application. Now, application process. The patent application process involves disclosing the details of the invention to the patent office. Upon approval, the inventor gains exclusive rights to the invention. Next is duration. Patents have a limited duration, typically 20 years from the filing date, after which the invention enters the public domain. Next, infringement. Patent owners can take legal action against others who make, use, sell or import the patented invention without permission. Now, dear students, let's discuss copyrights. Copyright protects original work of authorship, such as literary, artistic and musical works. It provides the creator with the exclusive right to reproduce, distribute, perform and display their work. Copyright automatically applies upon the creation of the work and registration is not required, although it offers additional benefits. A number of literary and artistic works are covered under copyrights. First, literary and scientific works, novels, poems, reference works, newspapers, plays, books, pamphlet, magazine, journals, etc. Musical work, songs, instrumental music, choruses, solos, bands, orchestras, etc. Artistic works such as painting, drawings, sculpture, architecture, advertisements, etc. Photographic work, portraits, landscape, fashion or event photography, etc. Motion pictures, it includes the cinematography works such as film, drama, documentary, newsreels, theatrical exhibition, television broadcasting, cartoons, videotape, DVDs, etc. Computer programs, softwares and their related databases, maps, technical drawings, etc. Now, dear students, let's discuss the copyright duration. In India, copyrights exist for 60 years for literary, dramatic, musical and artistic works after the death of creator. In case of photograph, film, sound recording, the copyright term is 60 years from the date of publishing. Now, we will discuss copyright infringement. The copyright infringement means making, selling or taking financial benefits of copyrighted work without permission of copyright owner. It is a criminal offence and the minimum punishment for infringement is imprisonment for six months with a minimum fine of rupees 50,000. Now students, we will discuss the history of copyright in India. India's copyright history reflects a continuous effort to balance creator rights with evolving demands of technology and global standards. Colonial era Till 1947, the Copyright Act of 1847 during British rule had laid early foundations for copyright protection, albeit limited. Copyright Act of 1914, significantly expanding copyright protection, this act covered a broader range of creative works until India gained independence in 1947. Post-independence, the Copyright Act of 1957 replaced the 1914 Act aligning with international copyright standards and introducing economic and moral rights for authors. Amendments and revisions. Ongoing amendments addressed technological changes with revisions in 1983, 1984, 1992 and 1994 to accommodate evolving creative forms including computer software. 
Digital Age Amendments 2012, the Copyright Amendment Act of 2012 addressed digital challenges introducing provisions on digital rights management, internet service provider liability and digital rights for performers. Subsequent amendments. Further updates in 2017 refined copyright protection addressing issues like fair use and digital rights to align with the dynamic creative landscape and international agreements. Now students, we will discuss key aspects of copyrights. Originality. Copyright protection applies to original works fixed in a tangible medium of expression such as books, paintings, music or software. Duration. The duration of copyright protection varies but generally lasts for the life of the author plus a certain number of years. Fair use. Certain uses of copyrighted material may be allowed under the doctrine of fair use which includes purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship or research. Digital Rights Management DRM. In digital age, DRM technologies are often employed to control access to and use of digital content. Now we will be discussing industrial design rights. Industrial design rights refer to the legal protection granted to the visual design of objects that are not purely utilitarian. These rights aim to safeguard the unique and ornamental aspects of a product such as its shape, configuration, surface, ornamentation or colour. Industrial design protection prevents unauthorised use of these visual features, promoting innovation and ensuring fair competition in the marketplace. In India, industrial design rights are governed by the Designs Act 2000. Some key points related to industrial design rights in India include number 1. Registration process. To obtain protection, designers need to register their designs with the design office of the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks. The registration process involves submitting an application along with representations of the design. Number 2. Novelty and originality. For registration, a design must be novel and original. It should not have been disclosed to the public anywhere in India or abroad before the filing date. Number three, term of protection. The initial term of industrial design protection in India is 10 years, which can be extended by another five years through the payment of renewal fees. Next is scope of protection. Industrial design protection in India covers the visual design of an article and it extends to features such as shape, configuration, ornamentation and pattern. It does not protect the functional aspects of a design. Enforcement. Once registered, the design owner has exclusive right to use the design for the registered period. Unauthorized use of the design can lead to legal actions, including injunctions and damages. Exclusions. Certain designs are excluded from protection, including those dictated solely by function of article, those contrary to public order or morality, and those primarily of a literary or artistic character. Industrial design rights play a crucial role in promoting creativity and fostering a culture of innovation in industries ranging from consumer products to automotive design. Registration provides a legal framework for designers to protect their creations, encouraging investment in design and contributing to economic development. It is essential for designers and businesses to be aware of and utilize industrial design rights to safeguard their intellectual property in competitive market. Now students, we will discuss geographical indications. Geographical indications, GIs, refer to indications that identify a product as originating from a specific geographical location where a particular quality, reputation or characteristic of the product is essentially attributable to that place of origin. Geographical indications are a form of intellectual property rights that aim to protect and promote products that have strong association with a particular geographical area. India recognizes the significance of GIs in safeguarding the unique qualities and reputation of products tied to specific regions. The legal framework governing GIs in India is primarily outlined in the Geographical Indication of Goods, Registration and Protection Act, 1999. India boasts a rich cultural and agricultural diversity reflected in variety of products protected under GIs. Examples include Kashmiri saffron, Darjeeling tea, Banarasi saris, Kanchipuram silk, Alfonso mangoes, Basmati rice and Nagpur oranges. These products derive their unique characteristics and qualities from the geographical regions where they are produced. Legal protection. 
GIs are protected as intellectual property rights to prevent unauthorized use of the geographical indication by producers not located in the designated region. This protection helps maintain the reputation and quality associated with products from that particular geographical area. International recognition. The protection of geographical indications is often governed by international agreements and treaties. The agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights under the World Trade Organization sets out the minimum standards for protection of GIs. Registration process. In many countries, including India, the registration of geographical indication involves an application process with the competent authorities. The applicant needs to demonstrate the product has unique qualities or characteristics associated with the geographical origin. Benefits to producers. GIs provide a significant advantage to producers from specific regions by helping them differentiate their products in the market. The protection encourages economic development in the region and helps in the preservation of traditional knowledge and craftsmanship. Enforcement. Enforcement of geographical indications involves taking legal action against individuals or entities that misuse or misrepresent the geographical origin of a product. Penalties may include injunctions, damages or other remedies. Geographical indications play a crucial role in promoting fair trade practices, protecting cultural heritage and supporting sustainable development in specific regions by recognizing and preserving the unique qualities associated with products from those areas. Dear students, we will discuss now the IPR status of India. The World Bank carried out survey concerned to Knowledge Economy Index KEI, of 140 countries across the world on the basis of their knowledge-based initiative, policy framework, economy incentive and institutional regime, information and communication technologies infrastructure in 2007. India ranked at 101st position due to lack in aforesaid parameters. Similarly, India ranked 14th, 9th and 13th position in patents, marks and designs respectively. Based on total resident and abroad IP filing activity by origin in 2014. Rankings are based on the total numbers of applications filed by origin. It can be analyzed that India's worldwide participation in IPR filing activity is mere 1.6%, 3.14% and 0.82% for patent, trademarks and industrial designs respectively. The participation is even less if only resident applicants are considered. Unawareness amongst youth, academicians, researchers, industrialists and traders in India about IPR and its benefits is the main reason for lagging behind in IPR participation. Even micro, small and medium enterprises that constitute around 95% of all units, 40% of total value addition, nearly 80% of employment of the total manufacturing sector and 35% of total exports are also lacking in IPR edge. Due to these reasons, there was no Indian multinational company in top 100 patent applicants worldwide during 2003 and 2012. Indian industries can survive if they prepare themselves as per the local as well as global IPR needs as a strong IP portfolio makes a good business sense by securing loans, enhance market image, attract good alliances and investments. Thus, there is a dire need to develop appropriate guidelines to rationalize IP strategy. Definitely, India has the potential and skills to emerge as global leader if appropriate IPR strategy is practiced to improvise its share in global trade. Now students, we've come to our conclusion. Intellectual property rights are fundamental to fostering innovation, creativity and economic growth. Trademarks, patents and copyrights serve as essential tools for protecting the diverse range of intellectual creations. As technology advances and global markets interconnect, the importance of robust intellectual property systems continues to grow, ensuring that creators and innovators are incentivized to contribute to the progress of society. With this, we conclude today's lecture. Thank you. Music